Economically speaking, times are tough in Calgary, as we all know, and migration to our city has most certainly slowed. Thousands have lost their jobs, and we've seen a great many citizens leave the city in hope of greener pastures elsewhere. As such, the housing market in Calgary has changed drastically over the past 18 months. Home starts, including single detached homes as well as multifamily dwellings, are down significantly as buyers just aren't buying like they once did. In fact, many new homes sit vacant as builders try to entice new owners with different incentive strategies. The rental vacancy rate, which sat at 1.4% in October of 2014, nearly quadrupled to a vacancy rate of 5.3% by October 2015. So, what does this mean for Calgary renters and landlords? Is this a temporary event? And where does this leave our affordable housing crisis? Hey Calgary, I'm Kevin Chorney, this is Calgary Now. Tonight we're talking, well, as the introduction alluded to, vacancies, rental, everything you need to know if you're looking for a place, if you're a landlord, we hope to discuss that tonight. And I am joined by Richard Cho from the Canadian Mortgage and Housing Corporation. Sir, thanks so much for being here. Nice to be here. As well as Jerry Baxter from the Calgary Residential Rental Association. Jerry, thank you for being here. No, it's my pleasure, thanks. If you would, real quick, uh, Richard, tell, tell people that maybe don't know, what does the CMHC do? And what's your role there? Yeah, we do a number of things, but in my department, we, look, we take time to look at the market. And so for me, I'm the, uh, the analyst for Calgary. And so I uh, look at some of the economic trends, housing activity, things yeah. like new home construction, the resale market, as well as the rental market. So you've got a lot of people knocking on your door looking for interviews these days. With yeah, the every once are. in a while, yep. I would think so, yeah. Jerry, uh, tell me about the CRRA. Well, we're an association that's been, been around since 1959. Uh, set up and we continue to operate as uh, an association to be the voice of the rental industry on behalf of landlords. Perfect, perfect. Okay, well then maybe I'll start with you, uh, Richard. I mean, as of December 2015, 3,450 houses sat vacant along with, I would think, probably as many or more apartments in Calgary. Mm -hmm. I mean, are a lot of landlords suffering these days in Calgary? Well, the vacancy rate in October was 5.3%, as was mentioned earlier. Yeah. And so th things are much different compared to the last couple of years when the vacancy rate was uh, below 2%. And so I think we're in a time where landlords are having to do more to attract tenants, either, yeah. uh, either offer more incentives, uh, lower rents, just do more to help attract and keep tenants in their units. What are some of these strategies, Jerry, that we're seeing landlords employ in order to, uh, to try and rope that tenant into their property? Well, you know, one of, one of the more obvious ones uh, that, that we hear about on a, on a pretty regular basis is uh, uh, offering something that's free yeah. to tenants. So, you know, if you sign a lease with us, we'll give you a free flat screen TV. And that works for, uh, for many people that uh, uh, it's something they're looking for. So yeah. they're happy to sign on the bottom line. We've also seen uh, in some cases, but not, not all, some cases rents have actually decreased. Uh, in order to keep tenants and and to attract tenants as well, it's a very competitive market. Very uh, much so, yeah. It, it truly is, and so every landlord, based on their business model and uh, what their goals are, has to be as competitive or more competitive mm -hmm. as somebody else out there in the market. Is reducing the security deposit a good strategy, or is that a dangerous strategy for landlords? Well, it does it. We don't see too much of that. Yeah. Uh, you know, most, most landlords are keeping the security deposits where they were when the tenants first moved in. New tenants moving in, some landlords have actually reduced the, uh, the, the amount of the security deposit yeah. in order to attract them. It's another incentive. There's a, there is a danger to doing that because the security deposit is really intended to assist landlords at the end of the tenancy to repair any damages that uh, have been caused by the tenant. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the less money you have and the more damage there is, the less you can cover with the security deposit. You really do have to be careful as a landlord. Background checks, security checks, as much as you can. I yeah. think it's probably paramount, especially this, this day and age when there's so many people looking to rent. Uh, Richard, they say rents are down. Now, you know, I did a bit of online research. You can, quote, you can tell me if my uh, quota numbers are wrong, but I heard 20% across the board, essentially, is what rents are down. That's what's been reported in local media. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a significant number. And obviously, we're still seeing a whole lot of rental properties on the market. Uh, is this indicative of, you know, potentially a period in time where landlords were, you know, maybe gouging people with their rental rates? 
Our, our latest numbers were taken in, in October, and so at that time, uh, rents were actually on par with 2014. Oh, is that so? What we often see is a, a bit of a delay in terms of a rise in vacancy rates and a change in rents. And so at that mm. time in October, rents were still uh, fairly comparable to, uh, to, to the previous year. Uh, we don't have any, any, any new numbers in terms of where rents are at now, but we are forecasting rents to remain, on average, relatively stable compared to uh, the previous year, but I think on the same sample basis, we, I think we'll see rents uh, move Clearly, I've got some year. bogus news then in my research. <laughs> uh, Jerry, are rents fair price right now in Calgary? Well, I believe they are. Yeah. Uh, you know, we always take exception to somebody who uses the term gouging. Mm. And, it's a negative uh, word. It, it, well, so. it, well, it truly is because, yeah. uh, you know, most landlords are very professional, they're very credible, they're right. ethical, yeah. and they're honest at what they do. And uh, it's, a, it's a business for them. And many of them are very small landlords who will rent out uh, a house yeah. or uh, they may have a secondary suite and they have mortgages to pay. And you know, the bottom line is you have to be able to achieve a rent that yeah. will assist in paying that mortgage because you can't operate a business at a loss. Point, right? of course, you know, yeah, I mean, of you can't do that. Many of the other, many of the other uh, uh, landlords that are out there are much larger and they have, uh, they have investors. Yeah. And investors look for a return on their money. Otherwise, they wouldn't invest That's or right. they'll take their money and they'll go somewhere else. Yeah. So because it's such a competitive market, rents are usually very comparable. So you may find, you know, you may find somebody out there who uh, tries to take advantage of a situation and jack their rents up. We don't support anybody that does that. It's good stuff. But rather, we're, uh, we're an association that uh, we have a code of ethical principles for our members, and we expect them to, to follow it. So we're looking for people to be fair, honest, ethical, and obey all the laws. That's, that's what that's we look for. That's the bottom line. Right? That's great. That's it great. really is. That's the way it ought to be, right? Absolutely. Folks, we are going to jump to a quick break and check in with the Rant Pack. Stay with us. Renting in Calgary over the years has become such an up and down cycle. I've lived in this city my whole life, I was born here. I've seen a lot of the ups, I've seen a lot of the downs, and it benefits people in the long run on both sides of the fence, whether you're trying to rent something or you're a renter. Myself, I used to own a property, lived in it myself, never tried to rent it myself, but as a renter now, saving up to buy another place, a better place, this is my golden age. I can get a fantastic house admittedly far away from downtown for about $1,700. Three bedroom houses are being advertised now. So for me, this is the golden age and I'm really liking it. The process now of uh, fielding different tenants. Uh, I've been talking to many people that have been to my property. How important is it for me to run a credit check, do you think, Jerry? Is it a vital step in, uh, in part of the process? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it, it's so critical for landlords to, uh, or anybody getting into the business, to know and understand the business and doing your due diligence. So that, in, that includes doing reference checks, so mm -hmm. current landlord, previous landlord. Employment checks, because you know what landlords are looking for when they do the employment check is, do you make enough money to be able to pay the rent? Right, right, okay? right. Income the, to rent ratio, right. Exactly. Yeah. The credit check is a, an extremely important part of that due diligence process. And because what it does is it tells you, do people pay their bills? Or if they don't pay them, there'll be judgments against them somewhere. Yeah. So who, what business person wants to take somebody on who's a bad risk? If you go to the bank with a bad credit rating and you want to borrow money for a car, you're not likely going to get it. Right, right. The course. same thing applies when you're looking to rent as well. You know, the thing that's frustrating, though, for potential tenants is that when a credit check is done, especially even, even for a rent, and this kind of surprised me, it's a hard hit. So you're going to lose, you know, five to seven points off your credit rating automatically. Now, in the States, they've got something called COSI. And what COSI does, it allows tenants and landlords to work together to pull that person's credit rating, and it's a soft hit. We don't see that in in Canada, and it's a little bewildering to me. I mean, do you think people, Richard, are educated enough when it comes to what their credit report looks like after uh, these these polls are made? I think some are. I think it depends on the individual, but I think it's definitely important to be informed before uh, before uh, signing a document or yeah. before even looking for a place to rent. I think mm -hmm. it's definitely important for people to know what they're responsible for, but also where the market is at as well. Do we need a cozy? In, in Canada, something that's going to allow tenants and landlords to work together to ensure a soft credit check? 
Well, I don't, I don't know that, uh, that we need that. Uh, you know, the, the interesting thing is the more times you check your, you can check your own credit rating, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and so it's really important that people do that to see in advance. But if you've got others checking your credit rating, you may take a slight hit on it. So the question is, um, how, if you're out looking for, for somewhere to rent, you know, how many people are going to be doing credit checks? So you may take a bit of a hit, but if you've got a good credit score to begin with, hmm it's not going to make a difference because people are, you know, your score will build back up and, uh, you know, landlords will be happy to have you as a tenant. You know, I went through this exact scenario actually with a few uh, potential tenants and what we decided to do was for them to just pull their own credit report and then supply me with a report. Makes sense, no? Well, they can do that. Uh, part, part of, it, it's really interesting, you know, uh, not not everybody is honest and ethical mm. tenants and, and, landlords. and you gotcha. know and, and we see it sort of both sides you yeah. know uh, but you never know if the credit score or credit report you're going to get is it actually belong to the individual that you're dealing with so you would recommend actually insisting on having that credit report pulled absolutely from the the landlord themselves the landlord should the landlord should do that as part of their due diligence okay. that way the landlord is assured that they're collecting information on the person that they have interviewed, they've spoken with, and they've actually seen and met with. So now I'm getting nervous about my potential tenants then, right? <laughs> uh, what sort of, I guess. Uh, you know, I do my due diligence as a landlord, let's say, hypothetically. I find the right tenants that I feel. I've done all my checks, we've run the credit check, sign them to a 12-month lease. In four months, the rent stops rolling in, and they flat out refuse to leave. As a landlord at that point, what is my recourse? Well, you have just touched on the single biggest problem that's faced by landlords throughout the world, and that is tenants who do not pay their rent. It's the number one source of evictions yeah. anywhere. And uh, so as a, as a landlord, if a, if a tenant stops paying the rent, uh, landlords have remedies, they have recourse, uh, there's things they can do. But it costs the landlord to do it, yeah. you know. And uh, generally speaking, you know, you can issue the tenant with a notice, and hopefully they'll pay the rent or they'll move. But you still haven't collected the rent if they decide not to pay and move on. Or the other option you have in Alberta is you can go straight to court, and okay. you can take the tenants to court, and and try, you know, get a judgment for the uh, get a judgment for the money that's owed, and get an order of possession to reclaim the unit that the tenant's living in. So they get a time frame in which they have to be out. So how long does this process take, and what kind of funds are we talking about coming out of a landlord's pocket to have this happen? Well, the landlord, uh, conceivably, uh, depending on the tenant, uh, if the tenant hasn't paid rent, mm -hmm. and you get a judgment, you have a piece of paper that says the tenant owes me rent but you may or may not be able to collect on that. So, I mean, the landlords could conceivably be out one month's rent. It's not, un not infrequent for us to hear from landlords who are in the business, and these are ones that we deem as being not necessarily all that well-educated to the business. Mm -hmm. And some of them will allow tenants to go two, three, four months without paying rent. Brutal. And the tenants will tell them, story, I'll get it, I'll get it to you, I'll get it to you. Yeah. And it doesn't happen, it's a stall job. And, you know, our, our position, and we teach a course on this, a two-day course for landlords, and one of the things that we teach and we talk about is that if the tenant hasn't paid the rent, give them an opportunity to pay it. Go speak to them first before you take them to court. If they're not going to pay it, I would just advise going straight to court and, uh, because you want to cut your losses. Yeah. Don't let it drag on. And so if you go to court, you can probably have a, have a judgment and have your order of possession within about three, three weeks or so, with, so within a month. Do tenants have, or pardon me, do landlords have enough power over their property when it comes to tenants that maybe don't want to get out of there? Well, I think, I think the Alberta's law, you know, really, and my, my, my personal opinion, Please, yeah. is I think that Alberta has probably uh, the best legislation in the country. And I think it's balanced mm. and fair for both landlords and tenants. Almost all of the offenses under the legislation are against landlords, yeah. but l the legislation also provides remedies and options for landlords when dealing with tenants who breach their, their lease agreement or breach the legislation itself. Yeah. So there are options, and, but like everything, you know, it, it costs money to do it, and then you hope you can try and collect at some point down the road from the tenants. Understood. Understood, folks. We are going to jump to another rant pack break. Stay with us. renting and affordable housing in Calgary. Um, I've been lucky enough to live with my parents this whole time. Uh, we've had this deal that as long as I'm in school, I can live there rent free. 
Uh, unfortunately for them, they didn't think I'd, lit, I'd be in school at the ripe old age of 30. Um, however, I am graduating, so I will be moving out. Uh, so if the market stays how it is now, I'm looking forward to it because I'll be a, a poor graduate. Uh, so um, for myself, it's a thumbs up there. Um, however, one of my best friends, they're looking to sell their house and they're having some issues.